Hi, it's uh, Avery Life for Chief Customer Officer of InfoStretch here on DTV at the world headquarters of Founder Institute. Founder Institute has a couple hundred chapters around the world. We'll incubate several thousand companies this year. Digital first, people using technology as attackers. And we're gonna have a quick conversation with Adeo Oressi, who's the founder of the Founder Institute. And he's gonna share some of his insights and ideas about how are the attackers using digital to win in the new industries and how can you prepare to better respond? So Dale, great to see you. It's been so long. It's, it has been a long time. So tell me a little bit about Founder Institute and what you guys do here. Uh, well, we're, we're at the Founder Institute now, uh, and what we do is we take aspiring entrepreneurs all around the world in about 200 cities, and we help them launch uh, a new technology business. So, given all that, how do you see digital transformation? I mean, that whole issue of how to use digital as an offensive weapon, it's got to be a key thing for a bunch of these companies. Well, so most of the companies that we start are founded by slightly older entrepreneurs. The average age is about 33 to 34 years old. So uh, a classic Founder Institute entrepreneur might work at a, a large talco or a large company that you would know and they would be you know, a pretty much a, a manager, well-paid individual and there's some sort of problem or opportunity they see and they say, uh, hey, my company's not able to solve it for one reason or another. And so they decide to break out and solve it on their own. Now, sometimes that problem is directly related to what the business yeah. does. And sometimes that problem is an area they're just passionate about on their own. But I would say it's probably like 60, 40, 70, 30. A lot of times it's, it's a business issue that they see yep. that through their employment, and they feel, hey, this really needs to be fixed. So, you know, digital transformation is happening every day. It's just not happening within the confines of uh, medium to large businesses. So, how do they know when it's uh, that they're going to be able to go start this thing? I mean, there's a, there's like a, the but like that's a thousand dollar question, yeah. right? You got a good job, you see this transformation coming along, you say. I'm going to go jump, no safety net underneath me, but I can go make this thing happen. Well, yeah, so there is no easy answer to that, right? Yeah. Um, I would say that first and foremost, anyone who takes the leap, we call it the leap, in, uh, into entrepreneurship, uh, especially if they're slightly older, understands that there's some big risks involved. They're not, they're not going in uh, blind. The reality is that about 80% to 90% of all new technology businesses fail within two to three years. Uh, and that's, that's a known statistic. And so I think if you go in and you want to take this risk of starting something, the better prepared you are, the more likely you are to succeed. So it's really, if you're thinking of making that leap, you need to do, take as many precautions and prepare as much as possible, yeah. like preparing to run for a marathon. You don't just go and to the starting line and yeah, I'm gonna run 20 some odd miles and yeah, yeah. hope I win. It doesn't work that way. You have to get your body in shape, get on a certain diet, practice, run increasing amounts of time, and that kind of preparation will help you succeed if you, if you wanna make that, that leap. And one of the reasons I was asking is there's some people who say, well look, I have this idea and I wanna see it come but I don't want to leave. I want to figure out how to transform the place I'm in, right? And, and how many of the, the principles you're talking about could help someone in that situation? Because that's also a common case. Yeah, but I think they get, at least every time that I've seen that, the, that leads to a bad outcome. Um, most of these big older companies have a command and control culture and where it's like, okay, you're a person that works for me, you mm -hmm. need to do X, Y, and Z. And in that world of someone working for someone else, it's very hard to innovate. You need people working with other people mm -hmm. on projects, not working for other people to hit business milestones. 
I, I think those people that you mentioned who want to innovate within a company do exist, but the, the, the culture of the company, the, the scale of the opportunity, and, and I can go on with other problems, they, they, they prevent that kind of intrapreneurship that a lot of companies want to see. So they're fixes, but um, you know they're just not easy. Here's the reality, Avery. Okay, um, and I'll give you an example of. I, I think Google's doing a pr pretty good job here. Yeah. So, uh, AI just last week surpassed the comprehension and reading of yeah. a Stanford student. Okay, the job elimination. Uh, volume that 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 discovery and two or, companies at about the same time That's yeah, the yeah alibaba thing. and microsoft yeah. the job elimination of white in the white collar field from the, the the manifestation of that discovery into commercial applications is massive yeah i mean legal f lawyers are in trouble mm -hmm. with with that kind of discovery you know one of the yeah. professions that you might assume will be safe for a long period of time they'll regulate themselves into a safety Absolutely. net but you know, so you got a massive elimination of white collar jobs that's right around the corner, and you already have the massive elimination of blue collar jobs that is starting and has started and has been going for some time, and so, you know, these companies have uh, a command and control structure designed to control thousands, tens of thousands, certainly hundreds mm -hmm. of people, and that the the roles that those people are filling are getting. Uh, eliminated and mass so innovation is coming whether you like it or not and so then the question is are you going to be prepared for it yeah are you going to be on the front end of it or are you going to be on the tail end of it and so, i can tell you if yeah. you're on the tail end of it you're going to look like the newspaper industry yep. you're going to look like the music industry you're going to look like soon to be the movie industry and these industries that were you know clawing on to their position yeah. rather than embracing change. So flipping around to like startups. So startups have no money. Like that's the yes. kind of the point. And it's the joy. It's the joy. That's you, we're in the you, you <laughs> live in Airstream. You live in Airstream. In my beautiful house over here. <laughs> my house in Boca. <laughs> or sorry, I've been sorry in Palo Alto. But uh Freudian you, slip? <laughs> yeah, for, well I mean I lived there another place, similarly expensive place to live. Um for a, for a, a little for a startup, should they put every bit of money in terms of digital transformation about changing customer experience or is there anything to be done in terms of am I, once they get QuickBooks are they done with digital? <laughs> Look, so let's take a step back. There are a lot of problems in the world today. Um, politics, healthcare, I mean the list is long, yes. food, uh, frankly security, immigration, blah blah blah, refugees. The Startups will solve all of those problems, yeah. and some of them are going to be like really fundamental digital transformations, right? And but then some of them are are not, and okay. so it really depends on the startup. So for so, the ones that are digital transformation, like I'm going to use technology to change this sure. industry, and, and you can use blockchain as a great example, a example. there. Um, there are people using blockchain in, in many, many ways, like remittances in Ripple, yeah. one of the great success stories of the crypto world right now. And, you know, the whole company is a giant digital transformation. Yeah. From the ground, it's, it, it went doing remittances, one of the oldest businesses in the book, right? Western right. Union, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it started out in doing it the old-fashioned way, like and abusing banks and things, and then moved. It went through its own digital transformation, launched its own cryptocurrency, which is now, you know, one of the top three cryptocurrencies being traded in the world today, uh, you know, making the company worth billions and billions of dollars. I think it's the <coughs> single largest um I know a few angel investors, and they're at like multi thousand, eh, multi hundred x on the company, and multi thousand x on the currency, which is just you know crazy. It's insane. Yeah, and and but like they're they're they're, they're they are not they never sat by the sidelines and rested on their laurels. They said, hey, you know, innovation is happening. Yep. I'm going to be on the forefront of it. So 
what you see with startups is digital transformation happens within them all the time. They never sit, they never sit steady. Yeah. Um, in fact, a lot of the companies like Amazon and others that you brought up were born as startups. Yes. So they still have this, you know, we need to continue to innovate, continue to innovate um, mentality years and years later. So what happened when I asked you about digital transformation that I should have? What? Uh, I, if you're not doing it, you're in deep doo-doo. <laughs> well, I thought we covered that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, when should you start now? <laughs> Yesterday. How, how quickly should you move? Very. Um, you know, I think that it's safe to assume at this point that we're in, we're about to run into a wall uh, really, really fast and hard. And yeah. so, you know, it's we're kind of two steps of innovation away from like a massive removal of white collar jobs. We're maybe one step of innovation away from a massive removal of blue collar jobs, right? Um, and you know, that means that we're going to have a massive uh, amount of human population out of work uh, so and then what is money right and and now you have the the underpinnings of a fiat currency this concept which is kind of tethered to productivity and work yeah. being fundamentally questioned right you, you can't tax human beings if they're not working yeah. right so do you tax robots do you tax AI I don't know right no one's really thinking about these matters yeah right and now you have this cryptocurrency coming out yep. right which is like crazy in and of itself so i mean they're really 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 big questions that need to be thought through well look uh so I, I really enjoyed it just a day Rossi, founder institute the founder of the founder institute that's almost recursive yes thanks it is. well thank you so much for coming out to our beautiful backyard